It's a wonderful day to talk about some video games. How are you doing, good sir? I'm doing very, very well. Thanks for having me, as always. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk about this stuff, but it's, it's. I would argue it's not a very good day. Yeah, for, it's not... for some companies. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. We're gonna talk about it. Try to bring some some color and levity to the discussion as much as we can yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah for some people this is like the worst day of their lives um oh, well, okay okay <laughs> i won't take it that far <laughs> it's like it doesn't look great but uh yeah, yeah. Th that says more about so a person's life is if if destiny yeah. not doing well is like their worst day well i was thinking about like the devs who are left or who are laid off of like their dream job and granted it's a first oh, world yeah. problem if you're like dream job getting laid off for that if that's like the worst day of your life in general you've probably been okay especially with some of the other stuff going on in the world today but all of that said it's there's some like negative things we're going to talk about that are going on in the industry we're going to touch on those um and kind of discuss some of the why some of the uh basically we're going to try to dig a little deeper than just the surface level conversation of like this unfortunate thing happened therefore it's all you know just jim ryan's fault or it's all this or it's all that as normal these these issues have some nuance to them and discussing them is going to be interesting i'm excited to hear it we're also going to clarify some stuff from mr Jor raptor's time with frontiers of pandora i had a couple Whoa. of yeah uh, i had a couple of questions about the game that we can follow up on and then sure sure um as for other stuff there's also some info about capcom doing some stuff ubisoft um <laughs> is making some interesting <laughs> choices with their marketing and so oh we'll, we'll talk about all this stuff we'll talk about in the yeah, meantime gotta be a good one yeah how's your week been uh it's been good uh i've actually been a little like tired and ill i think i i just got yeah got like a cold last week and i haven't been fully recovering so uh, i will be like going straight to bed after this like reboot people who don't know when we record it's like nine pm here so that would be like around 10 30 which is like great um yeah i have to get some i also like did not have any like alarm set today and i woke up at 10 15 pm so <laughs> that also tells oh. you that uh, i need to get some <laughs> extra sleep but it feels like kind of that, that end of the the crazy two month marathon of game releases and now it's maybe it's finally slowing down so now finally my body is also like oh we can rest now yeah and, well, maybe we're doing that finally. Yeah, no, it's I can hear it in your voice that you're you're probably not. Feeling oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I can feel a little. <laughs> um, so yeah, Godspeed with that. Good luck. I, there's bugs also running around here in the states, um, here in Colorado. I know, like, like in my direct friend group, if there's like maybe eight of us, I think six of them are currently oh, quite damn. sick. There's just something going around. Um, I don't know if it's a new variant of COVID or if it's just a cold. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, it's it seems to be in the air, unfortunately. But well, yeah, um, thank you to everybody joining us live. Of course, yes, um, thank you. People watching the VOD or, or listening on the go. We're glad to have you here as well. But the people watching live um, today actually are watching either on YouTube, Twitch or Kick. We are co-streaming everything oh, now. Oh, damn because twitch we're, changed we're their policy as well. yeah we're kicking i've never been i've never watched the stream on kick is that like fun um uh, i mean it it's a thing uh <laughs> for me it's mainly that once you decide to restream it really is just like switching a toggle like you you press a button and now you're live on kick too and yeah, i can yeah, press no, it again it's, and it's like oh i'm live on twitter too so there's well, very little barrier to entry now um but should i like grab multiple chats then because i'm only looking at the the, the ogs on youtube what i can do well, is what? i i think how this can work i think what i can because do. of course for people who don't know twitch uh lowered their or like, they kind of removed their requirement that you can only exclusively twitch on stream if you want mm -hmm. so now yeah that opened up a lot of doors i will be going back to, to twitch as well for that reason 
Yeah. Uh, I've always liked Twitch, but yeah, yeah, they had some bizarre choices. What I can do, Jor, though, I can send you this link, and it should let you see all of the chats at once. Um, which... Pretty Eye is asking, Jor was traveling too, right? That's exhausting too. Yeah, I have been traveling. That ha has actually that was actually a few weeks ago. I would have been today actually at Paris Games Week, uh, but that uh, fell through at the end, and I'm kind of happy that it did actually because, yeah, that, that would have been an extra. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing the the link you put there so I can like get everything in one place. Yep. That's um, pretty cool. The chat is ready to display messages. Okay, your where are you from? Oh, that's Adam D. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands. The yeah. tiny, the tiny country where uh, we have uh, stove waffles and uh, windmills. How is it's it pronounced? Okay. What's the exact, how is it pronounced? We're, uh, the Netherlands or Strobwafels? Strobwafels. Strobwafels. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have, like, I have like family members who think themselves very culturally sensitive. And so like when they found out my son was named Lachlan, instead of just like saying Lachlan, they went Lachlan. And like oh, they, oh, yeah. when they see Strobwafels, they're like, oh, Strobwafels. <laughs> and they like try to do it very stereotypically and so yeah, hearing yeah, the yeah. proper pronunciation is always a little jarring where i'm like oh it doesn't sound like a cartoon character it's it's just funny to me um no. oh yeah do you guys have wooden shoes uh no I, I, wait I, wait wait we do klompen, klompen. I, that's like <laughs> i love it <laughs> but that is like that is just so like if you go to like our airport and then you go to like a tourist store you get all those like stereotypical things but we in the netherlands never use that anymore so you're telling so me like, with a straight face you do not own a single pair of klompen <laughs> they're like pretty like heavy and they're like not like convenient at all yeah shocker it's like if wooden you go shoes. through the mud yeah yeah wooden shoes not that comfy mud, yeah no <laughs> Oh, well, I, I look forward to learning more about your, your your culture and your traditions as we go through yeah. this. Here in Colorado, I'm like, I don't know, what interesting things do we have about Colorado? Like, our economy used to be, like, centered on gold, like, the gold rush and, like, sugar beets, which is, like, a lamer version of, or a lamer way to get sugar than, like, sugar cane uh, or corn. And other than that, yeah. like <laughs> uh, our food, like what is the main food associated with the Netherlands? What would you say is like the most recognizable thing? Cheese. Cheeses. You guys have good yeah. cheeses? I can see that. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's like kind of in the same like sort of clump. Uh, uh, I see someone here, Casper, in the chat. Uh, he's talking in Dutch. I will <laughs> translate it. In Groningen and Friesland, they still walk on klompen sometimes really oh that's kind of yeah. cool i bet that sounds so cool though it's like actual there... clippity cloppity <laughs> yeah no it it's it sounds horrible uh, <laughs> is there a pretty kennel outside your place your there is actually is so yeah, i'm in amsterdam and we've like cool kennels uh, and i can like grab my bike and be anywhere i want in 15 minutes that Thank is you. actually super cool i don't need a car you don't need a car i need yeah. a car because where I live, it's pretty much 15 to 20 minutes to get anywhere. Um, oh, but it's nice because we have like a lot of space and we've got a decently big house. And so there's there's perks. It's not all bad. But like you have cheese and clumpin and gibble snacks <laughs> and gibbly goos and all sorts and, of and stuff. And drop. Drop. What is, like that, what yeah, is that? That's like also like, a, um, yeah, how do you explain that? Maybe Casper can uh, do it better. But it's like a black sort of candy as well. It has like a very distinct taste. Oh. Um, and that's See, also, uh, here in Colorado, kind of our iconic food are called Rocky Mountain Oysters. Do you know what these are? Rocky Mountain? No. <laughs> are you going to Google it? Yeah, yeah I, I was going to do. but <laughs> yeah, go, go, go ahead and Google I want to see what it says. I don't actually know how they'll describe it. Uh, Rocky Mountain. That's what, that, yeah, they're called Rocky Mountain Oysters. Um, or in, they're also sometimes called Prairie oysters but they are not in fact oysters do you see what they are yeah it's like chicken wings or something no they're bull testicles <laughs> what the heck? they're what the like balls of bulls <laughs> yeah yeah um oh. 
that's what we're fried, known though. for. Yeah. They're fried and they're very tough and honestly they're pretty terrible. But um oh drop is licorice. Interesting. Okay, it's just licorice. We have just, licorice too. Yeah, okay, but ours is like we, we it's like a very, Does yours taste very, better than licorice? Because licorice yeah, is Yeah, but gross. We, like if you want to get the best licorice, you have to like go to I think um like Austria, like they have like very good one. Like if you like order it. Oh. I there there's like do you know licorice um like licorice shots? So like uh, a drink that it's called like yeah, drop shot is what it's called here. So licorice shot. Oh, so I very good. I don't think I mean in the U.S. licorice is like it's memed on. People commonly just say it's disgusting. It's like the worst type of okay. Candy. But it's they like haven't had good ones. Yeah, yeah I, it's like I'll oh. have Jägermeister. Are you guys super into Jäger there? Yeah, we have it, uh, but it's like yeah, fine. Have you ever had, here's a question, then we can talk about like video games because we're, <laughs> that's kind of what this is supposed to be. But ha, have you ever had Bekarovka? No, no. Bekarovka is another one. I think it's from, I don't actually um, know where it's from. It's from the Czech Republic. Yeah, so it's provo or produced in Karlovy Vary, the Czech Republic by Jan Becker Company. And it is similar-ish to Bekarov or to a uh, Jägermeister, but it's like a very Christmassy taste. You taste it, and especially if you were to mix it with like a cream or something, it actually tastes like you feel Christmas should taste in a really cool way. Um, it's, it's, uh, I can put it on screen. Yeah, it's this. It's like in a very big green bottle you can only find it at some places yeah. but this is my deep cut recommendation if you're interested in trying something a little different um wait let me uh, quickly write that down yeah yeah try it. it's it's good stuff i'll tell you what it it's not licoricey but it is kind of herbal and i like it honestly i i, I like it a friend of mine who's polish um let me try it one time and i was like actually this is pretty it's like Pretty good. It has like good good scores here on the, the local uh, uh, yeah liquor store. Um, yeah, only also pretty cheap. So uh, yeah. I got it in my basket. Who knows? Yeah, give it a shot. Well, back. That's your homework for the for the week. Yeah, oh. <laughs> and uh, Cosper is saying in the chat as well. Sambuca. Do you know that? that I, that's kind of what uh, what it tastes like. The the I, shots. I, I do know sambuca. Yeah, sambuca. That's that's pretty good. It's an Italian yeah. anise flavored liqueur yeah. um yeah that's good i've okay. had that in cocktails and stuff but anyway okay so video games Love about right? that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not drunk or anything yeah, I swear, like. I swear we're not alcoholics yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so i guess okay. the that we should just start with the titular topic the big boy topic that is on everybody's okay. mind that everybody's sure. talking about which is of course the stuff going down with Bungie. If you mm. have not heard somehow what's going on, basically it came out of nowhere uh, yesterday and the day before a little bit that there were going to be some cuts at Bungie. Some people were going to be laid off and we were expecting like maybe part of the marketing team is laid off. Maybe like a couple people in accounting are laid off, but surely they're not going to like go scorched earth. Well, they've actually laid off a lot of people, about 8% of their total staff is being cut or has been cut. Um, and this is after sales and revenue at the studio were, uh, not joking, 45% lower than the projections were for the year. And the equivalent of that, like I said, is if you were expecting to make $100, they've only made 55. They are not doing anywhere near as good as they were hoping that they would be right now. Um, they're almost not half of where they should be to, to talk about that though i've also watched like a lot of uh like people that are very in the the uh, bungee and destiny community uh and paul tassi for example heard that they also made these projections like unrealistically high f bef um, before sony was going to buy them because of course they're they were bought by sony for three point uh six billion um last year and of course, you want to get that number as high as possible as Bungie management. So the rumblings right now are that they were like, yeah, we're going to make this amount of money and it's going to be great. It was never realistic. And now 
yeah, when it's, I mean, Lightfall is also like the previous Destiny 2 expansion doing worse than they expected. It has been a huge year with a ton of other releases. So it was probably never realistic that they would even come close to that. But still, they put out that number to Sony. So that might also be part of the issue. Yeah, no, absolutely. And if it's one of those situations where Sony came in bottom expecting, like I said, to make a hundred bucks and then they make 55, Sony's not going to be yeah. thrilled. I mean, they're, they're obviously <laughs> no. like, the hell are you guys doing over there? So they're trying to find ways to, to deal with it. One of the ways you deal with it, of course, is by cutting projects, by um, kind of reworking different expenses. One of the other ways you deal with it is with downsizing, with letting people go, firing them. And I think, again, it's it's usually pretty telling where they cut jobs. Typically with video game developers, you see people cut in like marketing because, for example, their saving grace was expected to be this game Marathon, which is the upcoming game from Bungie, their next big thing for Sony and their first new release since being owned by Sony. It's been pushed to 2025, though. So they're not expecting to release it within the next fiscal year. So you would expect a lot of those marketing jobs whose primary purpose is to try and build hype and get people excited for that in various ways. You'd expect them to maybe get laid off and then maybe some of the finance guys get laid off and you know, a lot of that stuff to be affected. They're laying off actual developers though. And they're laying off people that have been with Bungie for decades, including the individual who designed the original Halo logo. They're laying off the composer that's worked on all of these games. Like they're laying off some big name talent too, which I think surprised just about everybody. But yeah, on, on one end, but I, I want to play devil's advocate there for a moment. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. like, uh, like they did a fantastic job, but I also think it's like for a game like Destiny 2, like when did it came out? Like, it's 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 an old game at this point. Was it 20? Oh, 2014 was like when the original came out, right? So yeah. like 2017 or something. Uh, we, can, we can quickly look that up. But I think it's like very probably expensive to keep those like high caliber people uh, around if you're only making post-launch content. So maybe they're looking at that as well, but it still sucks. And it's still a sort of like, that is what a lot of people associate destiny with the music and to not, to now know like probably um, the composer and the, audio, because it was also someone else from the audio team, they probably have done already a lot of work for the final shape, the yeah final DLC for the, the current storyline. Um, it's still going to suck knowing that after that you won't hear their stuff anymore. And yeah, that's a big, yeah, that's a big uh, slap to the face uh, when the game is already kind of struggling after Lightfall. So, mm -hmm. but I also would imagine that they might be looking at the fact that is it really needed to, for a ser life service game where people are grinding loot and stuff to have a big composer in house, right? Yeah. Um, well, it's, you know, we don't know also what salaries are like. We don't know all of this. Like, I think Jor and I are in, are in interesting positions because we run businesses ourselves. We have people that we pay. We know what it's like to try and manage your expenses versus the revenue coming in and make sure that there's still profitable um, ways of doing things. And I, I think there's been a, a sort of narrative, especially on Twitter, or X, which as we all know is kind of a cesspool, so you shouldn't be surprised, but there's been a narrative around it where people are seeing developers laid off at Bungie, and the only explanation possible is that this is just Sony executives trying to cut jobs to make profits higher because they're amoral sociopaths. And sometimes it's more nuanced than that, believe it or not. In this case, whether the forecasts and expectations were uh, ever accurate, clearly Destiny 2 is not doing the numbers that they expected it to be doing, whether those numbers and expectations were in check. And also, I mean, I think players can even see that Destiny 2 is not the game that it was a handful of years ago, for better and worse. But more than anything, just players, I think, are getting a little burnt out on it. Um, I think you guys were saying 2017 is when Destiny 2 launched. And yeah. so six years later, and the current expansions are not thrilling people. Even the most hardcore Destiny fans are not that stoked on the newer stuff. So 
it shouldn't be a surprise that numbers are dropping. And now they're saying that their next game that's supposed to bring a ton of cash in is going to be coming a year later than they thought. And so you should expect to see some adjustments to be made. How they're doing it, I'm not, of course, not going to defend. Um, there are stories of people showing up for work yesterday and their key cards just don't work. And then they check their work email and they can't get in their work email because it's been shut off. They can't even go inside and say goodbye to their friends or try to get phone numbers for people that they need to uh, to talk to. Um, the reason hey, for uh, that is typically because they want to provo or prevent theft and things as much as they can. When people get fired, they tend to get mad. And then you could see leaks. You could see people taking screenshots or whatever else. And so they typically do this hard pull out the rug to fire people thing for that reason. I don't, I still think that that doesn't necessarily justify the way they've done this, but that's at least why they tend to do it this way. Um, but overall, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's wild. It, it, it's overall like um, the, the, the kind of things that, that you're seeing in terms of uh, when with the, devel with the people that were let go, like it was not their fault, but it is the leadership fault that they're in this position. Uh, we also have kind of rumors from reporters or well, yeah they're reporting it they heard it from sources that the developers said to the management like we see that the um like the the player sentiment is at a all-time low especially after lightfall that didn't have a great story and um i think also the kind of scuttlebutt is that uh, the final shape dlc was supposed to launch this year but they pushed it out to give it more time. And they thought, okay, shit, we still have to have another expansion. So in a relatively short time, they put together Lightfall to still have that bump. But yeah, that kind of backfired because it just wasn't on par while being the first expansion that was actually uh, cost more money. And so yeah, a lot of people jumped back. It actually had the highest concurrent on Steam when Lightfall hit. But that should have been the moment to grab those people again. But instead they left kind of feeling like okay if this is destiny i'm kind of out i actually heard that the seasons that were after that have actually been pretty good but then you have competition from Baldur's gate 3 armored core uh you name it starfield like a lot of other games asking for hundreds of hours of your time why go play that when on the other hand you have a destiny that instead of trying to win back players has only been getting more monetized i uh, one of the things they've changed is, for example, you buy the season pass now, so you get things for every season. But first, the dungeon was included, and now they made this separate dungeon pass where you have to... So you think, okay, I'm getting everything from the season with a season pass, that's kind of the idea. But no, if you want the most substantial piece of content, you also have to pay that. You cannot pay that... Like, you cannot only buy this dungeon, you have to buy two of the dungeons. So... They're like nickel and diming the people that they still have left. And then you're like, okay, but I can also pay 60 bucks for Baldur's Gate 3 and have as much time, maybe of a higher quality in terms of story and stuff. Why am I not just going to do that and let Destiny be for, for a moment? So instead of like being very like inviting, welcoming uh, to people, they went the other way and were probably seeing the number go down and seeing to oh we said to sony we're gonna make this much and we're far from achieving that let's try and get as much squeeze as much out of the wheels that we still have left while yeah kind of getting a bad reputation in the process that's kind of from what i've seen uh has happened and uh also just the way how these employees i'm not sure if you saw that have been treated where they're kind of let go on the second to final day uh, of the month so they only have like one day left for like some of the benefits. They also like Sony's. Uh, they bought they bought Bungie for three point six billion, and what like one point two billion of that was for retention. And what they seemingly did is that if you stay with Bungie, um, you get like shares in uh, in Sony, and um, the longer you stay, the like you yeah the more worth and the better that share will be. But also if you leave before a certain point so before a few years you will lose that share it will go back to sony what happened is that the people that got laid off they did not have a choice they are losing that share that they have been building up since sony bought them as well so there have been like many kind of middle finger moves by the management and the, um the, they've just 
poorly managed this from the get-go. And also they were doing a new um, uh, HQ, uh, like a 200,000 square foot HQ um, that cost tens of millions to build. Um, despite Bungie saying, hey, we're this work from home company, doesn't matter. Why invest that much money in a freaking new HQ if what you're seeing is that Den Destiny is kind of on a downward spiral, Marathon is delayed, and you did not, like I saw just now that there were some streamers that talked to uh, Tarkov people that streamed that uh, extraction shooter. Of course, Marathon was announced. Uh, at the PlayStation Showcase, people that were really into extraction shooters, like big streamers, were seemingly invited to Bungie to play that game. And the sort of rumblings from them was also not that positive. So that's probably why they decided to delay it. Um, but then you still invest this much money in a new building, mm -hmm. like when you could also maybe spend it on keeping your people and actually trying to yeah, turn the ship around. So there have been, and, and the bad part, of course, is that it doesn't seem like the people that actually made those decisions that put those people out of a job that put the studio at where it is today they seem to be fine but i don't think they are like taking a pay cut or whatever yeah well it's like i saw, saw a couple people in chat um let me see if yeah, i please. can find it there was one do 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 do, do. um I'm sorry, you guys are so talkative. I'm trying to find it. Oh, so like Adam mentioned Bungie execs make 600K, by the way. Um, I don't know what their salaries are specifically, but like, I, I think all of us will agree. It's a bad look when somebody is, you know, a multimillionaire, they're making 600 grand a year. And then they're cutting people who make 60,000 who have more of an impact on the actual product than this individual would have had single-handedly. Um, I agree. That's that's silly. It's like when, you know, these big CEOs that take home $80 million pay packages, then lay off 10,000 people who together make a percentage point of what they make in a year, you know? Um, but that, I mean, this is just how it works. Those are the people higher up in the pyramid. So they make the decisions. And of course, very few people are going to willingly take a pay cut. That's why it's admirable when they do. I mean, was it, um, uh, oh gosh, the, the old, one of the old heads of Nintendo that passed away suddenly, Iwata. Yeah. I think he... Yeah, during the Wii U era, I think. Yeah, he took a pay cut during the Wii U era because Nintendo was struggling and he willingly took a pay cut um, to make up for that and to help prevent downsizing as much as they could. Like, that is the sign of a real leader who truly cares about his employees. But the thing with these, like, mid-level managers and upper-middle level, uh, level managers, they, like, they're not public-facing. Nobody knows who they are. They have no pressure to do that. There's no incentive. So a lot of times they don't even speak to those employees that they're letting go. Many of them have never met them. And have no idea who they're dealing with. I mean, I remember when I worked at Best Buy, there was at one point a, a shift to how they did things where they wanted to shift from like customer focus where they have um, people specialized in working with customers to build out their cart of different things they wanted to buy in the store that day. And then you would check them out and go on to the next client. And it was very like... Uh, specialist focused and then they shifted and they wanted to just hire high schoolers to do the same job not specialized no training or anything like that just go pull the laptop out of the case and then walk them over and as a result they fired many of the people i had worked with who were super specialized because they were more expensive and the people making those firing decisions had never met any of these people they were firing they had probably never even been in the store they were in some corporate executive office in minnesota and they decided to hand down okay fire this percentage of the workforce that makes over this dollar per hour amount and that's how we do it and it's just how it works. I mean, it's unfortunate and that's why it's so remarkable when there are managers who care about their employees and, and care about their quality of life. Um, uh, but just unfortunately that's quite rare. And instead this is how it works. Yeah. I mean, it feels like a human thing, right? To just be a human to those people that put in all the work, um, for you, I, I would say like every every like a CEO is super important, but yeah, it, it it 
the sort of like it goes like the balance is is way off in yeah. this regard and uh that really sucks and what what do you think happens from here so some other like interesting details is that again that final shape dlc that was supposed to release in february it's still not officially delayed at the time of this recording uh but jason schreier and ign and a ton of other people have reported that it will now launch in june 2024 because they don't want a lightfall situation again so they want to give that uh team more time to yeah deliver a great expansion but what that means is that there will be a new season starting soon for destiny but normally where like that that would go till february till the final shape and then immediately the final shape would launch with another like episode is what they're going to do now but now because the final shape is pushed the whole post launch plan is pushed as well so they will have a season that will last till june so it's going to be like a six month or seven month yeah. season which like crazy for a live service game and like that that's not gonna help them either and then when final shape is out that was gonna be like the end in terms of the current story i'm sure they're gonna like continue and stuff but they haven't announced like i think any big deal after that they're only talking about episodes and they got marathon that was supposed to probably when uh final shape and destiny would be kind of going down they would be supporting it still but then they probably had seen marathon come in to hopefully pick up the torch and yeah lead bungie to uh, more profitability but that now being pushed to 2025 and we also have Oliver Outcast, who, uh, yeah, specifies the rumor that I uh, just talked about. This was that there were like dark of centric streamers and content creators invited to Bungie because, yeah, they play a lot of extraction shooters. Marathon is one, and they were asked at the end of their session if it came out tomorrow, would you play it? And ne no one raised their hand. Of course, this is just like hearsay. Maybe something else happened, but if that is true, that's not a good good thing either. It's yeah. not like. We, we are hearing things where it's like, yeah, but Marathon will save them. So what what is happening here? It seems like Sony either got like a smoke screen and, and I don't know, but I don't think it's Sony's fault because I think they, they let them just do their thing and they mostly bought them for their live service experience that they want to apply to other studios they have. But yeah, it seems like they, they bought them at the worst time possible. Yeah, which for real. Crazy. I mean, it's there's a handful of kind of uh, cascading effects with this that I find both sad and entertaining at the same time. For one, you remember Jim Ryan said he thought they would get more value out of Bungie than Microsoft was going to get out of the Activision Blizzard acquisition, which at this point is freaking hilarious, um, especially seeing how Bungie is currently, uh, I guess, performing. Uh Secondly, like the the rumors surrounding the Tarkov streamers coming in and having really lackluster impressions of the game, that would not surprise me at all if that happened. It seems to line up quite well with um, general impressions and the fact that the game's getting delayed. But more than anything, this just... <laughs> like, these are the experts that they brought in to look at The Last of Us Factions... And they shut factions down because they didn't think it was going to drive long-term engagement. They didn't think it was good enough. They didn't think it was going to be profitable enough, blah, blah, blah. And so it really makes me wonder, was The Last of Us Factions so bad that they, like, they thought it was even worse than Marathon was? Or did they just shut down a game that maybe had potential because it was more player-focused and more, like, pro-consumer and it wasn't bungee enough it wasn't destiny 2 enough and so now they're they're like yeah we're the experts and then meanwhile their studio's falling apart because they can't get yeah it's, it's a really bad look i'm curious about how the naughty dog developers feel about that it's yeah. like if you're like oh you, you just like for your house on fire and then you say hey maybe maybe you should like change that and that uh yeah there's, that's kind of weird <laughs> exactly there's they're throwing stones in a glass house and it just yeah. it's a bad look and so I, I mean, if I were at Naughty Dog, especially if I really believed in The Last of Us Factions as it was designed, I would be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, yeah. Are you kidding? Who are you? Yeah, you're, you're lecturing us, but you can't 45 get 45% your... below expectations. Yeah, like it's bad. No and so way. There's two options. I mean, it could be the, the Last of Us Factions was so bad that even these guys were like, no, this is like really bad. Or 
it could have been that it like they just don't really know what they're doing in their current state um either way i agree i mean i think you put it well when you said that sony seems to have bought them at the worst possible time (laughs) as destiny 2 is kind of falling apart and then marathon is being received quite negatively and this is all tied up in playstation's new push under jim ryan into live service where uh, as i've run through this in previous streams but just to make it very clear we're gonna do ms paint um basically like how this how this works like if this was the budget before like in the ps4 generation for game development what they're doing now is for this coming year or the coming like three four years they've increased their total spending on game development up to here basically doubling it right but what they've done is they stopped it right here where it was before this is still for single player stuff but all of this is for live service games so what you're gonna see is like the same pace of single player games coming out that's gonna remain but you're going to also see just as many live service games many of which will probably be disasters coming out and so uh, but like this budget is built off of that assumption that many of these are not gonna be huge successes some of them are gonna flop but they just need one or two to be really successful so i i think this is just the start of many things that we'll see where like imagine if after all of this bungie releases marathon and it's just poorly received they also have that fair games game coming out that looks atrocious and like that's probably going to be a flop and so they have all of these live service games coming and i think very quickly it's going to do a lot of damage to the playstation brand where pretty quickly playstation's going to start to feel like one of these ubisoft or activision or ea publishers where it's no longer about consistent quality it's about throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks and they'll still have like god of war whatever the next one is they'll still have insomniac they'll still have those guys but as we know they're making a lot of those single player developers push out live service games as well we know horizon is working or gorilla is working on a horizon related multiplayer game Uh, yeah i want to talk about that yeah yeah there's a lot of these that are still coming insomniac's working on something like uh, naughty dog's working on something who knows if santa monica is going to eventually be doing something multiplayer but this is just going to keep happening and all of these projects take five six years to see the light of day so even if right now sony's like okay stop green lighting live service projects through the generation and into the next generation you're still going to be seeing the remnants of this jim ryan era of live service debauchery and it's why i've said from the beginning i think jim ryan is probably on the whole a very bad thing for playstation and i think we're only going to see that continued to be the case as years go by yeah because all the sort of decisions he makes like now and in the last two years we will only see them a few years later yeah uh, them yeah it, it, it's like super interesting like i i also said like uh i also saw i think who was it i'm still getting used to the multiple chats we have going on here but i think someone <laughs> said uh i don't think bungie is in trouble but destiny is in trouble but they have like like they had now eight uh, percent less but they have like thousands let's say now 900 employees and that is mostly to keep the life service that is destiny going and if that that is like their their golden goose and if that is slowing down and they have nothing to replace it with that is kind of kind of a kind of an issue they're in like a very expensive part uh, of the u.s as well so mm-hmm. they, they must be like bleeding money and um yeah if destiny is not doing that great and it's not that we just kind of see a turning point in the future at this point so that that's kind of worrying yeah. but that's why uh, like you you said a horizon online project that's why i'm worried about guerrilla games as well because it, to a lesser extent i kind of see this uh it's, it's kind of similar to um to what's happening with bungie because they also moved into like uh, yeah, I've talked about it. I'm from. Uh, I live in Amsterdam. Like one of the biggest buildings in Amsterdam is like Gorilla's building. It's like in the center of the city. It must cost them a ton of money. And they released Horizon Forbidden West the last year, which did fine. And they did the Burning Shores DLC, which also did fine. And they're banking so hard on this Horizon online project. We had a leaked art uh, for it, and uh, that was like 
look kind of Fortnite-y. It kind of looked like it missed the boat already or like get, went after this Gen Z audience when I think the Horizon audience is probably like late 20s, mm -hmm. 30s. Uh, so what are you doing? Um, and that kind of makes me really worried because they've been hiring left and right as well. If this Horizon project is a disaster, and that's just the fact, I saw someone else ask as well, what was the last successful live service game? And I can think of Apex Legends maybe as like a good one. Uh, what else, right? Uh, it, it, like a really like one that that has like really been, yeah, great for the for the long term. Uh, so the chance that that will not succeed and then they have Horizon 3, but if Horizon, like usually you want sequels to sell more, but Forbidden West sold less. Yeah. So I'm like holding out hope. I really hope they survive. I, I love that studio, obviously. I know you have different feelings about Horizon, but it's still like for this studio that made Killzone making yeah. this game. Well, it's I, crazy. Yeah, and I, I wish them the absolute best. I, no, I, I just, know that, yeah. Yeah, I, I just wish that, like for me, I, I think that they're, magnificent games in a lot of ways i just don't wouldn't call them like masterpieces i think that there's a lot that they do poorly as well but th that's true of many 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 great games but i think um uh like juice boxed hero says in the in the twitch chat forbidden west i feel got nailed by releasing near elden ring well then also remember that um breath of the wild came out right next to horizon zero dawn so they have yeah, a history of of doing that too I, I, that, that totally did not help but i also still think that if a game is like really good and if people keep talking about it it will survive because odyssey was also a sweet odyssey yeah. was also like they it also did not do great because it launched two weeks before red dead redemption 2 still sold 10 million plus yeah. easily that's a great so, example yeah yeah so so and, and I kind of feel that the Horizon conversation has kind of died down. And when the Burning Shores DLC released, I mean, I saw a lot of people that played it, but I'm in the bubble, right? I'm in the hardcore fan base. Uh, friends of mine kind of fell off with the, yeah. with the second game while they did like Zero Dawn. So I just worry that they're just banking too hard on it because that's the next story, spoiler alert, but there might be a Monster Hunter game coming very soon. And if you then have an Horizon multiplayer game, that's probably going to be similar good luck with that yeah so monster hunters uh, it's gotta be rough. huge and yeah um yeah it's i just it, it's the really tricky thing with all this it's like you mentioned where the leaked concept art which i don't know if we'll pull it up here because it is technically leaked but if you want to find it you can find it it's yeah, just horizon multiplayer and you will find it yeah it, it's very Fortnite esque it's very reminiscent of that it, it I looks think you very can pull it up I don't think they will get it but you think so? yeah okay. maybe yeah I, I've showed it in videos as well okay okay maybe I'm like pointing to <laughs> maybe yeah, all of a Luke's <laughs> channels are all banned <laughs> please no one's oh. clip this no one clip this. yeah let's uh, keep this between us let's see so where is it um let's go here i'll just pull it up in this tab it was from like summer 2021 though so things have changed we have to say that but on the other hand how yeah, much how could much it have it, changed yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah i mean this is it uh, this is like the tidbits and granted it's concept art so this isn't like in-game graphics or anything this can totally that says change. a lot though this says yeah. a lot though. The whole point of concept art is you're supposed to look at it and be able to fill in the gaps in your imagination of what it'll look like when you're playing. And obviously, this is a very different style than we got in the core Horizon games. Even just down to the beast designs where everything's a lot smoother, everything is kind of cell shaded ever so slightly. It's just very different. And you can see like they've got five players on screen here. So presumably it's like a cooperative monster yeah, yeah. hunter style game. And I mean, it, it could be super fun, but again, are I you, hope so. it's, it, I mean, that, 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 that's usually not even the problem with these live service games. They are usually sometimes pretty good. It's just that the market is so saturated. Um, you cannot keep up with the demand for people that want to play this stuff. And maybe it is really good, but if you also have Monster Hunter, people will probably play that. Because exactly. Yeah. It, it, you're not going to spend hundred hours in one game to do it again in the other game and they both release content at the same time you got to pick and choose well and it's and also just the... like one is the king of the the genre i mean oh yeah monster hunter shocker is kind of the king of the monster hunting genre and um so it's you know it's a great example is all of these from soft souls born like 
games that come out and launch next to Elden Ring. Like, I don't care how great uh, Wulong Fallen Dynasty is. If it launches next to Elden Ring, it will not do as well. It will very much struggle. And same with even Lies of P, which is a really good game and unique in itself. Even if that launches next to like an Elden Ring DLC or something, it still will struggle against it because people will pick one. And in live service games, you're talking about picking one for the long term. So it's not yeah. even like you can play it for two weeks and then move to the next. It's like you're committing. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, that that's just like I'm seeing just a couple of red flags here with guerrilla games are really like they have to nail it and i don't know man if they if they were just like staying the size that they were around zero dawn and forbidden west and just make the third game they would be fine but they're i mean i, I appreciate the fact that they're going all in and i think it's cool that they expand the horizon universe i'm just scared that the, the chances that it will go badly are significantly higher especially after this bungee story i think as well yeah uh, and my fear yeah. also is just i mean specific with horizon is that franchise fatigue is a thing when you release a lot of games in succession um it, it can have an effect and we saw like you mentioned like horizon forbidden west versus horizon zero dawn it's not at the same pace granted zero dawn was kind of uh, remarkable in many ways because it was a great console seller and it looked great in commercials and stuff. You know, it was very recognizable. But does a third game keep that pace up? And it's the same thing with like Spider Man. It's the same thing with God of War. Where how do you shake it up so it feels those, really fresh? Those went went up though. I, I think Forbidden West might have sold more in the first year than than Zero Dawn, but Zero Dawn reached I think twenty three million, and I just don't see Forbidden West hit that. Of course, it will come to PC. That will help. But it feels like the tail for that game has been way less than Zero Dawn, for example. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, of course, we wish them the best. We'd love to see it yeah. be successful, but you're right. It is. The thing with live service games is that you will develop 10 of them, nine will fail, and you hope that one will be successful. And that one, because they're so profitable, that one success will make up financially for all of the flops, at least in yeah, theory. Yeah, I mean, Ubisoft without Rainbow Six Siege would have been like in a different spot like rainbow six siege is like they're like they say like they actually that that game went 10 percent up in terms of revenue first last year like it's still growing actually again mm. and without that during the bad years they would have been no nowhere like yeah which is just crazy so, i mean yeah. it's like somebody in chat said um they need their own jinxie to like uh specifically destiny 2 needs their own jinxie to save them and i i think that that's interesting because like Jinxie, if you're not familiar, he's a streamer. He's mm. very, very big. He's like, I think currently the biggest streamer on all of Twitch. He has like 140,000 subs or something. Like the dude oh my God. is massive. And he is primarily a Rainbow Six streamer. Um, oh, really? Kind of came out of nowhere. But he has almost single-handedly with his community revived Rainbow Six. And it is it is a fringe game, granted. it's It's not for everybody. But his popularity tied with that game has very much helped it and i think something like that with destiny 2 could certainly help if you had a massive creator um on that scale that could work but it, it kind of begs the question is jinxie huge because of rainbow six or is rainbow six huge Both. because of jinxie and usually it's a symbatical thing where they work together yeah. and you can't just replicate that like there's no way that they can just bungie can go to somebody like tim the tap man and be like okay here's 50 million play nothing but destiny 2 that's not gonna save the game and we've seen that yeah many and times. it will probably not be fun to watch so that will also not help and uh yeah, yeah i think uh, but they also like up their uh, content base and stuff like that and i think just rainbow six being a, in a still a very interesting tactical shooter spot that just not a lot of games are in mm -hmm. uh, helps it as well uh, pvp as well that's of course also an issue with destiny they're kind of like neglecting their pvp base so all those people are moving to other games well that is what is like infinite content that keeps people playing even though there's nothing like new to play in terms of story dlc so oh man yeah. it's uh, gonna be interesting to follow but especially with sony buying them like last year it was like whoa huge yeah, it feels like they kind of got ripped off, at least now. But we'll <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I would be pissed if I spent $3.6 <laughs> billion dollars on something that's struggling to stay open. Like, Jesus. Um, but yeah, and I mean, now I think to wrap all this up, apparently there are some leaks, allegedly, 
uh, of statements from former employees um, oh. at Bungie. And this is on mostly Twitter. It's people that are saying, say, and so like, to be fair to Bungie, when employees are fired, they're understandably upset. And so you can't necessarily take everything they say as 100% factual because sometimes things get exaggerated or whatever else. But um, some people have been saying that executives at Bungie seem to be of the mind that they need to put all of their chips on Marathon and basically put Destiny 2 um, on the back burner, understanding wow. it's dying out and they just need to double down on Marathon, which initially if marathon's amazing makes sense but if these other leaks and rumors are true that the overall impressions from creators are very negative towards marathon that's not great yeah it's like yeah we're gonna yeah. put all of our chips on this game everybody hates <laughs> It's not a great no, idea. No, but it, like it would have been way smarter to have this game out because that's what kind of happened with Apex Legends. I think the starting development team for that was pretty low. Of course, they used a lot from Titanfall, which they already created. And then they saw, whoa, okay, there's uh, the appetite for content is insane. The people are loving it. It's like number one on Twitch when we shadow dropped it. Let's build a team around it. Let's go. And now they're betting on something that right now seems to not be that great. Ah, that stuff. That stuff. In a in a like they haven't made an extra. It's not like Destiny Three. Like then I would be like, sure, it makes sense because I do think that would be a smart move. But oh well. Oh yeah. Well. But anyway, Destiny Two is having troubles. That's. Uh... I mean, next year Borderlands Four will launch, so that will totally help Destiny as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be playing that. <laughs> but either, anyways, want to talk about the Capcom stuff or want to go to Avatar? Yeah, let's touch on the Capcom because this is this okay. is actually pretty cool, and I'm I'm pretty stoked on it. I'm pretty yeah, stoked it's, on it. It's What's like, going on with it? Yeah, it's kind of wild because Capcom has been like doing really, really well. Obviously, they, they revived the Resident Evil series with new games. They did the fantastic remakes. Like they kind of set the benchmark for what a remake can be in the modern day. So that's really cool. They made a new Street Fighter game that people seem to love. Dragon's Dogma 2 looks really, really good. So they've been like making a lot of great choices. They're not doing a lot of the microtransaction stuff, live service. They're just launching a good game that people buy. What a concept. So now they are looking ahead, obviously. And again, they already had a pretty great year. Uh, Street Fighter VI is doing pretty well. Dragon's Dogma 2 again looks great, launching next year. But they still say that they have one major unannounced title planned for before April 2024 or before the end of their financial year. So yeah, that should be January, February, March probably. And that game has not been announced yet, which kind of crazy. And they say major, they expect this title to make millions. And for a Capcom game to make millions in probably less than a few months, if it launches in February, there would be one month because they say like millions in their financial year, which again ends on April 1st, 2024. Like there are only two possible options, I think, if you look at the Capcom sort of slate. Resident Evil, which will sell millions in a couple of days. Um, but yeah, they just launched Resident Evil 4 Remake this year. So them probably doing another one of those seems unlikely and there are actually pretty substantial rumors that they're doing Resident Evil 9 which will launch in 2025 while Monster Hunter has been quiet for a long time and that would of course easily be a title that they launch and will sell millions yeah like I do, I can't think of another sort of game like I saw some people throw out DMC like that team is doing Dragon's Dogma 2 so that's out of the question again they just launched Street Fighter 6 Dragon's Dogma 2 is already announced so it can be that what what is left? Mega Man is not going to sell millions. Yeah. It's not a major unannounced game. And looking at the timeline, Monster Hunter World came out in January 2018, I think. It's like a pretty long time. Yeah, 2018. Mm -hmm. And then Iceborne, the DLC for that, in September 2019. So it has been like a long time since they did like a big console PC first Monster Hunter game. They, of course, did Monster Hunter Rise on Switch. Later came to PC and console, but that is like made by a separate team. I actually, for my uh, Sunday video where I talk about the news every week, look this up. And on Wikipedia, for example, you see completely different directors and producers. So they have two teams. They have the console Monster Hunter team and the handheld Monster Hunter team. And seems like that console team has not been working on uh, something new till I or since Iceborne. Mm -hmm. So that would be 
2019 would be four, five years. I, I can see it happen that they're already ready to launch a new Monster Hunter game. That was actually also in the big Capcom leak. I'm not sure if you remember remember that. Like a few years ago, the full lineup for like many upcoming years was leaked. It all moved obviously a bit, but Monster Hunter 6 is like next up that list. Mm -hmm. um, it makes sense. It's going to be big. And I mean, just going off of the historical, um, how things have worked in the past for them, how they approached the last announcement. The last announcement was this one um, on June 12th of 2017 during E3. And then they released it about six months later, six, seven months yeah, in later January. at the top of January. So they are accustomed to doing pretty quick turnarounds. That's how they did it last time too. Um, Monster Hunter Rise, I don't recall how much of a of a head start they gave everybody. Um, but I can look. Yeah, awesome. It's it's not like they have a history of only announcing it years and years in advance and then slowly leaking information. They tend to do a pretty quick turnaround. And I'm yeah, I mean, if they, for example, announce it because the Game Awards makes the most sense, obviously, oh, yeah. like they, that's the big event for this year. Then if you like have that in uh, December, then and then launch it in uh, maybe at the end of March or mid March, you still have a decent, uh, yeah, decently like yeah. sized marketing time frame. And my theory is, if you announced Monster Hunter at Summer Game Fest, then it would completely overshadow Dragon's Dogma 2. because even if the games are completely different, one is a single player game. You still have like parties where you hunt monsters and stuff. Maybe like the the average Joe is gonna be like, what's the difference? So now they let like Dragon's Dogma get their Tokyo Game Show moment. People played it, they liked it, and bam! Then you launch, then you announce Monster Hunter, get the spotlight on that, have people play that, and then a few months later you talk about Dragon's Dogma again. Maybe that's like their tactic as well. Otherwise, yeah. everyone will be asking about uh, Monster Hunter. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, either way, I'm so giddy excited for this. I love Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter Rise was good, but I just personally, I like the Yeah, scale. you see that it was made for the Switch. Yeah. That was also six months, by the way. So okay. it, uh, it was announced in September 2020 and launched in March 2021. And wh wh what do you need to tell people? Like, hey, there's going to be a next-gen PS5, Xbox Series, PC, Monster Hunter. It looks amazing. There are going to be 100 monsters. You're going to hunt them. What what else do yeah. you have to convince people of? Yeah, I think it's actually having that shorter cycle has proven time and time again that it actually is beneficial. Yeah, so. it generates higher hype because like the wave of hype goes up, and then you release it right at the top instead of it going up yeah. and then dipping. People are like, oh yeah, that hasn't come out yet, and then riding that secondary wave. So, I think it's very likely, like you were saying, I, I don't know what else it could be. Um, I see people say Dead Rising 5, but I think they shut down that studio that made them. And that's not a million seller either. So Yeah, Dead they're, Rising's they're... been struggling for the last like handful of releases. That would be cool yeah. though, but Yeah, it, it just seems still that that's the only thing that's kind of holding me back. It seems too good to be true or something. To to have to start next year with a game we don't know about yet and it turns out to be probably one of the biggest games of the year, uh, Monster Hunter. Oh, dude, can that you sounds crazy. I... And why hasn't there not be a, been a leak about it? So that's where I'm kind of like, maybe it's not that. But yeah, if you like think about it, unless they're like overhyping it and it is, uh, or or it, is, it turns out to be Dragon's Dogma. But yeah, they really said an announced game. Or it's like, no, it's I... another Monster Hunter gotcha Candy Crush spinoff. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. major. <laughs> Yeah, you never know. I mean, yeah. maybe they surprise us with something lame like that. But um, yeah, I mean, either way, you'd expect if it's major, maybe it leaks or not. But uh, I mean, the other thing is, I th I'm, I might be remembering wrong, but I'm pretty sure they've had a pretty good track record of keeping things under wraps. It's not like uh, these teams at Comp Com no. Capcom tend to leak a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah. we'll see. Well, I, mean, I mean, but I'm, I, if this ends up being true, man, I'm going to explode oh yeah it's, and and i hope it's just not in february because that i cannot take that Dude. i mean I, that would mostly be said for the other games but i think march is still free skull and bones probably <laughs> how are they going to yeah. keep up with skull and bones <laughs> <laughs> how are they going to do that i, don't know. Oh, I mean maybe man. there's there's probably going to be like a mission where you're on a ship fighting a monster that's probably going to be cooler than skull and bones all yeah probably unfortunately uh that's just how it tends to work <laughs> I, I, I do see Dead Rising, like, these, that there's, like, a reboot, and 
I don't know, man. I, I don't see it. Or a I don't remake of the OG. I mean, but even that, yeah, I don't but know. Would if you that, call that sell a major. millions? Yeah. And is it like an unannounced major game? It's like I don't know, man. Yeah, when I hear major, I think AAA production, and I think a yeah. main IP. I, I don't think yeah. a reboot and, would be major. No, me neither. Of, of, of like a series that has kind of been like going downhill in terms yeah. of sales and popularity. So. Yeah. Monster anyway. Hunter Champions is that is that the rumored name? I, there there was like this leak on Discord once where there was like Monster Hunter Paradise, like that that you could like select that you were playing a game called Monster Hunter Paradise, which oh. seems like a perfect name for it. Yeah, but, I was uh, like, what else would they? They already did World. Do they do Universe or Galaxy or do they do like Monster Hunter Dimensions or something? Like, how do they how do they approach that? Yeah. But man, that when will, when that releases, all of us, I will probably be sick for weeks and i just be like sorry guys i just can't stream i can't do anything i'm sorry guys you won't just like go over the news while you have like monster hunter b-roll in the background of you playing like yeah, grinding i, I just the, have the like monster. my controller under the table and they're like wait yeah, why are you yeah, forward i'm just what? yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh it's it why was you're a... suddenly this angry <laughs> yeah. Mother uh sorry uh sorry i stubbed my toe um <laughs> but uh, oh adam it was a joke about wwe champions yeah that's the uh that's uh, the mobile game that dsp is addicted to um so yeah i hope that's true i would lose it what i also am tempted to lose it at is uh some of these discussions about ai stuff in games i mean ai has been a topic of conversation for like a full year it's been really at the the peak of the public discourse because it's gotten pretty good recently and it's gotten so good that people are starting seemingly to lose their jobs to it specifically in art departments writing departments it's pretty common um there was even that that story of somebody that was like i'm pretty sure some of these gaming websites are just using like a chat gpt bot to scan subreddits and write articles based off of what the top voted stories are in the subreddit oh. so they all came together and put in fake posts and upvoted it and then sure enough the these websites started posting articles generated oh off of that so it's it's now becoming good enough that people are losing their jobs to it and a handful of things have happened um yeah such as this where the finals which a lot of people have been playing they uh, had to respond to backlash because it was found that they were using AI voice acting in the game. And they said it's not their end goal, but the game's still being in development. So it's kind of like a placeholder voice uh, that they're using. And whether that's true or whether they were going to see if they could get away with it, I don't know. They, 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 I heard like a, they did like a podcast about it as well. And maybe we can like, can you like briefly sh uh, have it like sh play? I think that would be like interesting to let people um, hear it. Yes. Or, Let me see. Because yeah, I can like talk over it while you, while you figure it out. And if it's not possible, like it sounds like yeah. AI for you can like look it up as well as the finals. Um, but what they basically said during that podcast was also that they were like kind of happy with the quality of it, and they also brought up things like, what if we make a new mode that we have very quickly have new announcers and things talking about that mode because we just type it out and yeah, it would be obviously way less costly um yeah so they were kind of in favor of it and I, it seems like the backlash has kind of been like no it is not the goal and we still use real voices as yeah like that that's how you are supposed to do <laughs> yeah we but, still also uh, use real humans uh, yeah. <laughs> i mean this is what it sounds like you'll be able to hear it on stream i'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it Joe raptor uh, oh, no, no, sound worry settings, about but this is what it sounds like now the kingfish the jet setters and finally the powerhouses and they are off welcome to quick cash the team that I mean, talks away enough money first triumphs scotty said it i can Let's tell he's got the pace to ace this race it also just sounds like bad voice acting <laughs> so like it, it's one of those where it's like is it just a bad voice actor or is it ai find out yeah, tonight really at 11 like, yeah. yeah it's like you never know yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah who hired the announcer for the arby's commercials <laughs> uh, no but uh probably if you like do one of those shows where it's like one versus 100 or something and then you have like people in the audience guess if this ai or real people yeah, yeah it, probably not a lot of people can guess it but still like for a game where you have to listen to the like even if those are real people they will get annoying anyways because yeah. they will have the same lines over and over again if they're like this bad, it's even worse. And of course, it's the 
yeah, the the bigger picture where these th this is someone that could have like been hired to do this, and now they're yeah that 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 person or that job does not exist anymore. Yeah, because they found a way to uh, do it like this. I mean, I uh, to be honest, like this is one of those games. I get that it's themed around a game show, like you're kind of in a game show, kind of like Apex Legends. I mean, it's themed around like oh you're a contestant in this thing but um like i got invited to a preview event for it i don't know like early this year i think it was really early oh. this year and when i went to that it was the same voices and i just assumed it was kind of crappy voice acting i didn't realize it was ai or maybe it was like placeholder crappy voices i don't know but i remember one of the questions i asked the person, the like uh, employee that was helping us, I asked them if there was the ability to turn off the announcer's voices because I just found it actively annoying. Because like the whole time you're playing it, they're like, oh, and team, and then it's all the generic like select from yeah, the yeah. drop down list. Team, the sharks is pushing the objective, and it just gets annoying. So I, I think a lot of people would just turn it off. Like, does it actually affect the gameplay? Probably not. Like. It, it won't matter that much, but it is a sign of using AI to yeah. replace voice actors that would be doing that job otherwise. And whether you're comfortable yeah. with that or not is, I suppose, a matter of, of your personal preference, your ethical concerns. I'm, I'm not sure where you might land on it. One of the other things, though, that I think is a good demonstration of what this can lead to, though, is your tweet that you put out. What did you yeah. tweet? Yeah, so uh, I quote tweeted the uh, Ubisoft Dutch account, um, uh, and I said, Ubisoft shut down the entire Dutch office earlier this year and now hired a social media company to post on their platforms using AI art. Uh, and yeah, you see it on screen here. Maybe you can like uh, enhance the picture a bit. Enhance. So for for Halloween, uh, they 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 just typed in like Chat GT, GPT or whatever they were using. Assassin's Creed Halloween and they made this like assassin that is not even real uh, and a floating <laughs> Halloween in or like a pumpkin in the sky and it's like a, in a in a real life modern set it's like yeah and like nothing this, makes sense this light is it. attached to the brick wall and then like <laughs> but then the brick turns into wood and then this light isn't attached to anything so it's just floating in the air but there's a line behind it so like the ai thought that it was attached to something and then <laughs> these are supposed to be trees over here but there's no tree trunk it's just like i guess maybe they're supposed to be the shadows from this tree the whole thing is so confusing and probably the most insulting thing is that like yeah it's like if you squint your eyes it looks like actual artwork but when you look at the details like for one this person's head is not a human <laughs> shape like no. his eyes are here. What is all this? Like it's some weird, I don't dome or something. And then like the cap of the cowl of the the hat or the hood isn't centered, so it's like slightly off for some reason. Like everything. Like the more you look at it, the more infuriated you'll get because it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even have like a hidden blade or anything. Like the whole thing is just bizarre. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, there's like an even worse one though. That's the the from um, uh, do I have, yeah that, that I I put that in the oh I did I not share the link, uh but yeah you can if you like show the doc or like uh uh yeah get that image. I'm also gonna ask uh, Mid Journey to make the same thing, uh here, <gasps> as well as Benelux. No, this is the other one. I pulled up the same one twice. Um. Yeah, because here, here they they here they they also just like uh yeah hashtag mid journey hashtag mid journey <laughs> hashtag, hashtag <E> I A <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time I actually see that but imagine these are official accounts by Ubisoft that yeah. that can post any they have access to everything it's their freaking game and they were like yo social media company go at it and make stuff that doesn't exist like imagine like sometimes i'm like kind of uh, for example if you like work with with disney or warner bros or marvel or whatever they're like very strict 
And mm. I'm like, okay, maybe it is a little too uh, much, right? Because but they really try to protect their image. They want to be professional all the way. And I respect that. Um, but yeah, that, that can get annoying when you like have to go through multiple uh, sort of like checks before you can, for example, post a sponsored tweet or whatever. But this is like the, the this is the complete opposite. It's the laziest of the like, laziest. Yeah. Yeah. This like how can this happen? How can you be as a company this stupid to have to to share stuff that doesn't exist about your own game? Oh, and oh dude! Again, the more you look at it, his eye is yeah. in center. <laughs> so like, let me enhance. Like, look, his his eyeballs aren't centered. So like, his eye is slightly crossed <sighs> in. Um. It's also like, what is he holding? Is that supposed to be a, like his hand is back, like he's firing a bow and then this is a bow, but there's no bow but and arrow that he's holding. So his arm is like all distorted. And same thing with this. Like, uh, if I scroll down, this isn't how pinky fingers work. His <laughs> fingers aren't lined up, right? Like the whole thing is just horrible. And maybe this isn't even mid journey because mid journey honestly is way better than this i just yeah, live why typed it do, in oh yeah you yeah, have a, a counter to this <laughs> i in in like literally five to seconds of typing, i'm gonna get a job look yeah, at these like these at least look oh. pretty good like he, i don't know why he has pennywise tears um this one okay got a mask holding the pumpkin that's not bad this one is is actually kind of cool looking again their belts get all distorted and so <laughs> things like that distort when you look closely but like this one yeah i don't okay. know what he's cutting up or something he's making something but like this looks actually kind of good <laughs> these actually look way better than what we maybe, were just looking maybe at. they also typed in fortnite or something oh maybe they the did. other ones were like like super like Ezio has a Fortnite skin and this like kind of looks like it. Oh, let me let me try to uh, alter this one. I'm going to just tell it make it look like Fortnite. Um oh, somebody else <laughs> just upgraded or upscaled that image. So they somebody's actually taken that to uh to turn it into a wallpaper, I bet. Oh, That's really? Funny. Um yeah, I'm going to do Yeah, but how can, I mean, th yeah, they hired basically they first had like full-time employees that worked at Ubisoft like think of cool tweets, think of cool content. They built these social media pages. They were all laid off uh, in an attempt to cost cu uh, or cut cost, and now they just went to one uh, like social media company, gave them all the accounts, and be like, "Yeah, make a social media plan. Make sure that we have something every day." And that social media company was like, "Yeah, we can't like make art every day, so let's go with AI." But they clearly don't know anything about games. And no. it's just like, it's like a slap in the face to the people that work there that put a lot of effort into making these channels. And it's just a slap into the face of the fans as well. Like, if if you, if the company that makes the game doesn't even care, why should you care? It's kind of like, what? But I, I, I would imagine that everyone at Ubisoft is like looking at this that doesn't have like any control over this. It's also like, what the heck are you doing? Uh, but the... The 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 Benelux one is still up. The 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 India uh, uh, the other one is is uh, has been removed. Yeah. So which, one of them caved. Crazy. This is its variation of the Fortnite skin. But I think this oh, is supposed to be like a still crow. like a spooky one. Yeah, it's still spooky. I don't know what this piece is. Like again, there's always little crap that pops up with these where it's like you can tell because how it does it is it does like stable diffusion stuff. So if you start with your vision really blurry. That's kind of what it starts with. And then it tries to upscale it basically through steps. And so you can see where like this started as a crow, but then it turned into a mouse and then back into a crow. And then like this was maybe like a piece of cloth, but eventually it got upscaled to something metallic. So parts of it just don't work super great. But for something that takes five minutes, you should do this and then go in and Photoshop like that out. Yeah. Photoshop that out. And then at least there's effort involved with it. But these things that they posted are just like, laughably low effort like and and can you from the the mid uh journey uh ai like po uh, post tweets like immediately because maybe that's what happened and that's why they have the hashtag because why do the mid journey hashtag that is that's so like, freaking yeah that's so a good stupid. point maybe there's like a secondary tool that they're using yeah um 
that automates it or something and then because it's made with mid journey i don't know but i'm like baffled by this yeah the, the whole but yeah thing i don't want to just... like spend too much time on it but uh yeah the, i i hope that what the heck is happening what? yeah i agree this was another uh thing that somebody just posted in the mid journey they had it generate this and i thought it was really cute so i'm just going to share it it's they had it generate two astronaut mice driving a car in a supermarket and this is what it did um and i think awesome. that's pretty adorable so i, I mean this we're only going to see this more and more there's now ai yeah. art tools where like you can take i've seen this um uh where basically like the ai can take pictures of things and generate 3d models based off of those pictures so people are having mid journey produce like designs for characters and then they put it into this other ai tool to have a 3d model generated off of it and then they take that into this like into unreal and all of a sudden they've done like very very little work and now they have a 3d model of a character in their their project that then they can rig up and do that and i'm sure it's only a matter of time before ai rigging tools exist and maybe it already does so in the right hands ai can be an amazing tool where you could have like an indie studio that can make a pretty impressive game using these ai tools without having to hire all of these extra modelers designers and you know, I, uh, art people, but it also means that a lot of those, um, artists are going to be in a position where they're out of work. Now, what I would like say is probably best case scenario. Cause AI isn't stopping. I mean, this stuff isn't going away. What you're going to see is, uh, artists who learn how to use mid journey tools really, really well. And then go in. And like I said, can then Photoshop and tweak it to make it not look so hilariously fake or just nonsensical um with heads that aren't the right shape and all that so you're gonna need artists still at least until these tools get even better um but i mean even a lot of these tools depending on what you ask them to do they are able to do some some insane stuff i mean it's just a matter of time it's getting better and better every day like this right here that you're seeing on screen this is ai generated like and if you told yeah. me like there's a couple things that don't make sense with like this one where like the light isn't reacting quite properly, but a lot of these, if you told me these were pictures, I would believe you. Like I would not think these are AI generated. So yeah, it's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. Whoa. You got a huge uh, donation there. Oh, really? Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. I'm changing tabs. Hold on. <laughs> um, Sean, thank you. Oh, that's very generous, Sean. My goodness. That's very, thanks. We're Sean. gonna go out like, and get, uh, what was it called? Drop. Was that it? Was that what it's called? We're gonna get drop shots. We're gonna do that. Uh, my two yeah. favorite gaming channels. Good show, bros. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that's you. That's awesome. We also appreciate got some other super love. chats. Let's run through those real quick. Um, again, poggers to Sean for the extremely generous contribution. That's just humbling yeah insane generous. um god emperor sofa king praise be uh it says thank you for the five uh is sony on death's door they lost 30 percent of their net worth should people be worried about them uh, um no like corporate valuations fluctuate all tech companies are struggling right now so that's no surprise um sony is not the only tech company that has struggled in the last handful of years especially as debt has grown more expensive sony also just in general their business is kind of fractured they have a big gaming section uh, or segment of their business they have a tv segment camera segment they have cinema where they make films and then they also in japan have a huge like insurance business so they just do a lot of different stuff and investors don't always love that because it kind of is like you're putting on too many hats you need to specialize a little bit more um but as a company, they have very capable management on the upper echelons. It's always something people have said about Sony is that they're very well run. It's just a matter of how things, how like how the people on the under rungs of the company and the sub businesses can run things. And we'll see. I do think in general, investors are, are not thrilled with how PlayStation has been treating things over the last, or well, basically over this uh, console generation. That's something that's been common in a lot of their investor calls and stuff, but we'll see how it plays out. I mean, they're going to have like a great uh, holiday season with Spider-Man and uh, the new console coming out. Of course, they're doing like the smaller model, um, but it, it's mostly like they need to grow right now. And Microsoft has clear 
put like a, a few roadblocks into place of course with the huge acquisition and they are moving into streaming and like they you very clearly see where microsoft is going and sony is still stuck in this old sort of space where they're focusing on the single player games that work sure but at one point the growth and the amount of budget that you have to spend on those games also increases so maybe the profit never goes up and that's why they of course go into the live service sort of model um and they are not big on mobile while microsoft now is with king and they're trying different things but sony has tried and failed a couple of times and they are they have like a mobile studio now but there's like nothing really there for the 10 year plan that shouts yeah they're they're going to like do what do fine if the the current model which is totally going to change at some point like they're holding on to that and they're the biggest in that but i'm not sure if that will yeah continue when the new generation grows up and uh or go yeah gets yeah. older well and it's just so, like they can uh, release yeah. when they do release fir first party games from like santa monica or naughty dog those can be amazing but those come once every four or five years from them yeah and then they might get like they every only have other one year. this year yeah so, uh, and even in like that one this year I, I like granted this year has been crazy but the, like spider-man 2 probably is not taking game of the year it's probably not uh blowing i mean at, selling well that's all yeah they care about. yeah that's so. true i don't know i'm interested in seeing um numbers compared to the og spider-man i want to see how it did compared to that but yeah we'll see i think like so is sony on death's door no um no i don't think people should be worried about them i'm worried about their decisions leaning into live service as we went through earlier but time will tell if that ends up paying off. Who knows? Maybe in five years, you'll come and talk to Jor and I, and we'll be like, oh my God, did you play Marathon's new season? It's amazing. Like, maybe. We'll I really there. hope that we're then still playing the Horizon online game and that you suddenly have become like the biggest Horizon fan on the planet. Yeah, I've got like, that would be I have the whole costume. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, did you see the new uh, Aloy Focus they released? Dude, I don't even have it. Yeah, I've been grinding yeah, yesterday. Dude, I, oh, yeah, oh, I just got it, man. <laughs> I, I want to live in that world. Yeah, Joe Raptor, you need to get on. I thought you were a fan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Brandon, Dude, I got a life. <laughs> yeah, I got a life. <laughs> Chill out, Luke. I know you got kids, but goddamn. Uh, Brandon, thank you for the five as well. What you guys prefer, new Monster Hunter or new Dino Crisis? I wouldn't mind getting news on the new Resident Evil remake. Um, uh, or on what the new Resident Evil remake will be. I think, I mean, we'll see what they do with the next remake. I really have no idea. As for Monster Hunter Both or Dino Veronica. Crisis, Monster Hunter what all the way. Think. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And, I think like uh, Dino Crisis. I mean, we got Exo Primal, so go play that. No, no, but uh, I, I really think like only in our corner of the internet, people are asking for Dino Crisis, and I hope they do it. That would be cool. But like for Capcom, that do, like that that makes way less financial sense than making a Monster Hunter. Game. Monster Hunter is a uh, slam dunk. It's Dino gonna Crisis, sell yes. more in one day than Dino Crisis remake lifetime. So yeah, to put that into perspective. Yeah, I think that's I think that's accurate. Um, and then Cody Green, thank you for the two. Jor and Luke, favorite movie director of all time. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's that's very tough. I don't know. I'm gonna just go with my my gut. Like, I I could throw out like Peter Jackson for the Lord of the Rings. I I also am tempted to just say christopher nolan or wes anderson i love all of wes anderson's stuff i don't know i'm gonna do yeah. wes anderson because i can't think of a single movie he's done that i did not love um whereas peter jackson and christopher nolan there's a couple that i'm not super stoked on so i'm gonna go wes anderson i know it's the whitest answer i could give but that's where i'm at what about you yeah yeah i i i, I, I to be honest i'm just not like really that well known with movie directors so i i i just know the films mostly and i'm not really yeah kind of a person like that where yeah i i would not know i would say peter jackson as well but the hobbies suck so that's like <laughs> kind of spoiled the, it a little bit <laughs> yeah 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 so he should have just stayed away from that but should have stayed away yeah. um uh, James Cameron, like, uh, yeah, Avatar, yeah. let's go. James Cameron, clearly, I think he's one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, just yeah, in yeah. scale. But if you look at any one of his films individually, there's like 
certainly problem. Like I think Titanic is a masterpiece in many ways, just in, in a lot of ways. Um, but then like Avatar, like all of those movies, or I guess both of those movies narratively, like there's so many weird problems and they're also like not always that interesting. It's more about the spectacle. So I, I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's plenty, there's plenty to look at, but, um, thank you guys for hanging. Thank you guys for, for chilling. Um, I know we've gone a little longer. I know Joel Raptor is not feeling the best, so I want to make sure he can get to, to bed. You don't want to talk about Avatar. Oh, we can quickly touch on Avatar. One of the things I was curious about with Avatar, because for those of you that missed it, Joel Raptor got to play it. Um, Ooh. it's okay. I'm not jealous, but Joel Raptor got to play it and he had a lot of thoughts. Is it fair to say that your impressions were like, it's interesting, but I thought you were generally like very, I was proud of you. You were very skeptical. Proud yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, I was totally skeptical, but I, I it's always kind of hard with uh, impressions videos because people kind of latch on to the sort of negative side. But I think if you look at the 12 minute video that I put out, I've, I talked like four minutes about like the things I did not like while the other eight minutes about the things that I did like. Um, but yeah, overall, it it really is. If you told me before playing, what do you expect? It was pre precisely that. And I do think that as someone who's played all the Ubisoft games, who's like really kind of want them to improve and do better, I was kind of let down by the fact that they're not learning anything from the last few games. Like if you were kind of tired of the things that they did with Far Cry 6, I liked Far Cry 6, but I could totally see that when you capture an outpost, you have like a flag is being raised and everyone's like shooting out fireworks. Like we've seen that stuff so many times already and we're, we're kind of due for something new and it does not seem that Avatar will fix that. Next to the still like kind of December 7th release date, which like the final day of the year that you can actually release a game that still makes financial sense so for people to buy it during Christmas. I if they're seemingly going to do it, I still think it's gonna come in and in hot. Like, of course, it was an old version I played, but they, yeah, they, yeah, I, I ran into quite some issues. Um, but I think it's like it really depends on your love for Avatar. If you love that universe, it doesn't get better than this. And that's what I all said. That's the best thing that this game is going for. It. It's like that that triple A. Let's explore Pandora yourself game, and um. Yeah, just don't expect a lot of innovation in the gameplay department. But still, it's going to be cool to explore these dense forests. Um, the music is amazing. They really did a great job to, yeah, cinema, I said. But uh, I, I know you, you, you touched on that during your reaction. But, like, it's really like when you go to the movies, like, the best part about Avatar is the visual fidelity. It's the music. It's everything else. And this game... To a certain extent, of course, it cannot reach that level, but it's getting really close. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you want from this series. So so that's what it's nailing. But I do worry because I looked at the map and it's massive that you will run into this. Oh, there's another creature I have to save. Oh, there's another creature that has a sort of dart that I have to remove. And, and that's why it's also, I think you said it as well. Like usually we play Ubisoft games at pre-launch events for three hours, four hours. Now we only play for two hours. And usually, I mean, Redfall, uh, did you play it pre-launch? But that was like yeah. only 30 minutes or something. That's like really short. Yeah, usually that's, that's like a very, <laughs> that's a calculated move because they know that when you re go beyond that, you may start to see a pattern. Mm -hmm. And I've played these games so many times that I'm already seeing the pattern way before. Uh, and that's what I kind of like. I'd like to figure games out. And I had it with Mirage as well, which also kind of came through. I was surprised by some aspects still. And I hope Avatar does that as well, because we've still seen a relatively small part of the game. But also looking at the map, I was like kind of hovering over things. And most of the objectives are the, the bell spricks, which are like the sort of things that you have to touch to get health. So it will be, oh, I'm going to... So it's like a huge landscape dot 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 in between that you will probably not find a lot of things when you reach that location you're like okay what do i have to do oh now i have to find this tree that i have to touch for extra health oh it's a platforming puzzle oh there's an enemy oh it's like it really feels like a very old school open world game 
and um that is fine for some people like this game will be perfect for if you somehow just started playing games and are an avatar fan or skipped all the recent ubisoft releases and just want to play with the blue people uh in pandora i think it's gonna be great for that and as a ubisoft fan myself i do like the fact that we're finally seeing the cutscenes improve again with, with mirage it, it, it was like a lot of the Fahola body parts re not really moving bouncing uh sort of like a mouth and that that was kind of it uh and in avatar it's really like yeah there's a lot of stuff happening it's constantly like cinematic and i like that i think that's great for ubisoft open world i just kind of worry that the skill tree did not look deep enough they have these rpg elements where you're like do we even need it luke can you tell me what plus 10 percent stealth means yeah what, what do i get if i unlock that well, like, and it's it, they did the same thing with like uh, AC Valhalla, or I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah. Assassins Creed Valhalla, where like they had the plus one point two seven for some reason. It's that specific one point two seven percent melee damage multiplier, and it's like, okay, like you just made leveling up like a, a nothing burger. Like I, I don't feel any difference. It doesn't really matter, which is why they put an auto assign attribute point thing in the middle of it so it just turns into a skill bush the more you play it yeah, yeah and it's just like i think it's um like i think you put it well it's it's a game that you will love if you're an avatar fan probably but if you're looking for this to be like the reinvention of the ubisoft first person shooter formula you're probably going to be sorely disappointed yeah but e even if you're not looking for that it's like it's just like the the one that is the lost is always the least exciting be like if avatar released before far cry 6 or before far cry 5 perfect great but it's just that because we've done this so many times and it doesn't seem to try and reinvent anything mm -hmm. like it doesn't it, i have not seen any like sort of tweak or cool thing that makes it at least a bit refreshing uh, in terms of like the, the open world design and stuff. Um, maybe I did not see that, but uh, it, it's like when you take over an outpost, it becomes a base and in the base you can cook and craft and fast travel too. And there will be uh, allies in that base. And yeah, I, I don't know. It's like I'm just going in with those expectations and I hope I'm going to be blown away and that there's going to be way more than I expect. So far, though, sadly, I've not seen it. There's not a lot of enemy variety. It's like the 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 mech suits. It's like the, the helicopters. It's the soldiers. And that will probably be it throughout the game, I think. I haven't. There's not been a trailer or anything. Ubisoft has never been really good with enemy variety and they also do not seem to tackle that here. While... How many crazy creatures can you have in this game, right? They they can think of many things. Mm -hmm. So maybe we haven't seen those yet. I'm just kind of tempering people's expectations. I think that's great. And then hopefully the sort of... Because, again, the sound design is amazing. Like, that's kind of where it is next gen. And uh, the world looks great. Flying is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, th there's a lot of things going for it. But I do feel that even the people that kind of liked it during the preview because it was this short will at one point still get in that, okay, but it is still this uh, mm. checklist open world game. Um, I mean, one of the things I was curious about um, that you didn't really have time to touch on in your your just quick impressions video, what, what did you think of AI? Because like you mentioned that stealth is one of those things that, of course, you're going to be leaning into probably a lot because, I mean... It, it just you're taking on big encampments of very powerful enemies so it makes sense to at least start stealth focused but for me one of the most jarring things in any game is when you are trying to do something stealthily and then ai breaks or is just shockingly stupid like in spider-man 2 like how did you feel about the ai did you feel like it was akin to mirage or did you feel like it was better or different i don't know i i think and this doesn't sound great but i think the ai mirage is what was better from again I, I played like a short session but my tactic was shoot a fire arrow onto this mech and then it will explode because the damage over time was crazy and what happened is i shot that arrow the mech was like i'm burning i'm burning and it was like just walking around wasn't like calling for help or anything and then it exploded and 
I, I moved on to the next enemy. And one thing you pointed out in your reaction as well is that <clears throat> it look it took like a lot of a long time for people to notice this big blue creature in their base. So you had like five seconds, and there was not even a slowdown time, which is in Assassin's Creed, for example, to to kill that enemy. Or when they like call, they they do have like this sort of icon that shows, oh, they're gonna call reinforcements. That takes pretty long, and then even they will not run away or take cover or whatever. You can still just shoot them. So I'm going to say I wasn't really impressed by it, but I've kind of, like, I wasn't impressed by it as in, whoa, this is interesting. Um, they were pretty aggressive, though, but that's because they're like these giant mechs shooting at you, and that just does a lot of damage. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool as well that if you destroy the mech, you still have to kill the soldier because they will just crawl out and then still fight you. So that's pretty cool. But in terms of like intelligence, I don't think we should expect like any big leap or whatever in this yeah. game. I mean, and I guess the last thing, and then if anybody else has uh, questions, put them in chat real quick. Um, yeah, sure. And we can jump on that. Um, but I, I mean, one of the things I'm particularly interested in is because it's coming, like it's it's based on a huge um, franchise. Did they give you any information or or idea of how, like, involved the Cameron team, the Avatar team, or the Disney group is with this, or are they pretty hands off with it? So um, there were like two events, one where uh, people would actually fly to the studio uh, and the others was what I did. So I, I stayed home and uh, could play uh, yeah, through streaming. And usually you get like a, a video or something, at least introducing the game. And I heard from the people that actually went to the event. It wasn't the same week as Spider-Man. So for me, it did not really make sense, but um, that they really did get this sort of like way better introduction to the game. So maybe they talked about it there. From my understanding though, I do think, and that's kind of what, what happens with all these games, is that if I think someone at Ubisoft comes up with an idea, the yeah, the James Cameron team uh, has to like kind of give the green light on it. So I do think they're pretty involved in that regard, but I don't think it's like... And, and I, I think that's also good because if they're like really putting a lot of like... Uh, uh, like really are really hands-on that will also hamper the, the creativity of the team but it's in a different part of pandora it will take place during the events of the second film but i'm not sure if you suddenly hear something and it's like uh oh uh, something from the movie is happening and then i think that's also because when this game started it was supposed to launch before the second film mm -hmm. so probably that did not really make sense but they do have two dlcs planned I don't think those are related, but like I don't think they're gonna make another game for the third movie or something, right? So yeah. they might support it over time, and then you do get those connections a bit more. But so far, you do have like you start, you make your own character, uh, then you're like being captured by the RDA. You start training. Uh, I have not played this part, but that's the, that was in the trailer. And then during the Battle of the Halloween Mountain, which like during the first movie, then. Uh, yeah, they're kind of killing all the, the Navi that they captured, but you are saved by your teacher, so you go in cryo sleep. And then 16 years later, you awake, and that's during the Way of the Water events, but you're in this completely separate part of Pandora. But yeah, still when mm. the events of the Way of the Water happen. So Interesting. I mean, I think Hogwarts Legacy really set the, the standard for how... A hundred percent, yeah. Like, this should work, and... It'll just be interesting because my big thing is like if it's about exploring Pandora, I'm interested in those unique locations or recognizable locations. And that's going I mean, it's something we just aren't going to know until we I get mean, our hands on it. The, yeah. And they, they still have like the, the, the floating rocks and all that sort of stuff. Right. So you still have the sort of things that you yeah, that you know from the movies. It's just not that exact location. Yeah. So. OK, um, let's I, see. Yeah, if there are some questions, like I, I also, for example, um, like thought of like why because maybe some people are saying, yeah, but Hogwarts Legacy also did not really reinvent the wheel in terms of uh, open world, and that's totally true. But I do think that what they did with Hogwarts in terms of the cool secrets and 
that that just ty- kind of type of an experience that you don't see that there's like so much detail put into a relatively small location for a big open world game and i also think just the combat like not a- even having a melee option is already a huge difference from a game that basically feels like a far cry to shoot and play or a call of duty or anything else yeah um let's see zub thank you for the two i have discord questions regarding stealth ai i'm not sure what you mean by discord questions if you put it in chat we can try to answer them real quick for this um, yeah yeah but yeah I've talked about the stealth AI a bit already and yeah yeah, yeah. and it's, it was um yeah yeah. No, not that. Like, for example, when I, uh, I I talked about this in my video as well, there was this issue where the crosshair would turn red. So, you know, okay, when oh, I yeah. like shoot my arrow, I'm going to hit it. And then I was still out of range. So the arrow would just fall like a few feet before the enemy. And then the enemy would not be like, oh, there. Uh. It was like, uh, what's the arrow? And then I still had time to just walk, shoot again. So I got into range and kill it without the guy like, so... Don't get your hopes up that yeah. the AI will be great. And it's such a bummer, too. Because Oh, man. Um, let's see. Does the game give you outfits to change to? Oh, you're not ready. You're not ready. I saw the in-game shop. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, they got it loaded up? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. It's got to be, like, uh, crazy. If it, it, it kind of felt like Battlefront style in terms of, like, how crazy. I'm not, like, it's got... I don't know, maybe, but it's like because like a Disney property and they're kind of like doing their, their big IP game. But this, it's basically the Valhalla store where like you have like the item packs and stuff. But in the main game, you can, of course, also change your outfit and they have stats. But yeah, you only see it on the back of a bounce because you're first person all the time. Mm-hmm. The cutscenes are first person as well. So there are not many moments that you will see the outfits. Kind of a dumb game a to score. buy <laughs> to buy clothes in, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's what the, and and their kind of ship is your mount, so you have like a lot of outfits for your mount as well, right? So they're really trying to see, okay, let's do the Helix Thor, but for, for Avatar. Mm. Uh, but the the impact is way worse. Like that that that's also the case in Far Cry. You could like dress up as a clown, but only your co-op and, body. Okay, you do have like multiplayer. So, but then the other person sees it. But yeah, you, why, why, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's see. And do they say if it's always online? I, I would, I, w- I don't think so. I, I have not heard that it is, but it's probably like Far Cry. So you can play solo, alone, offline, uh, and then online with, with co op with a friend. I would be shocked if it's online only. I don't think it is, but I don't think it has been confirmed one way or the other. Yeah. Um, it's not one of those games like Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, where they kind of no. have to address that right up front since it's a co-op game through and through. Um, but okay, I mean, I think in general. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I know about the the the, the Discord uh, thing. Oh, the Discord. Oh, you saw that. Okay. Um, did you want to tackle those real quick, or are you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here. Um... So actually, uh, people were asking to make like a Discord server where they would put, que- like in my Discord, where they would put questions for the podcast. And I've been really bad at looking at them before the show. I did even put it in the doc and I still, I don't know, <laughs> my bad, my bad. I also Can I missed like... it in the doc, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but let's see, there are people posting Spider-Man pictures because that's kind of the thing here. Uh, I Oh, here. Enemies didn't split up. To check noises, enemies did not take multiple seconds to figure out if the player's in their view. How different is... So, yeah, it's kind of like how different uh, is the gameplay uh, in the Ubisoft form, uh, Ubi, Ubified formula. Wow. <laughs> um, and during stealth, enemies were simply programmed to look you up. So, again, I, I only played two hours. I've, I've played stealth, and it was satisfying, but it also felt like you could very easily cheese these enemies. So... I hope that maybe in the full game or when Luke is like way more into figuring out the AI and stuff, maybe then we will see some cool things, but I would not expect it actually. I, I Yeah, going in. Okay. I mean, I, I, you better believe when I get my hands on it, I'm going to be screwing around with the AI and see how it oh, is. Because yeah. like they used to be, like Ubisoft used to have pretty good AI in Origins yeah. and Odyssey was actually pretty good. And I, I would even say it was one of the best in the open world space among other developers. But 
sure. with Valaha and uh, some of their recent games, for whatever reason, it's just taken a nosedive. And maybe it's because people don't bring it up, so they just don't feel the need to like reserve computing resources to do that i don't know it's I, just weird i have hope for red i have hope for red because that is of course from the odyssey team so and, and they seem to include some like new stealth mechanics where you can like yeah hide in the shadows and put out fire so yeah you won't like you can turn off the light for example basically uh so you can have more mechanics than just whistling and stuff so maybe they also when talking about that, when they finally reveal the game, we'll talk about some cool new uh, AI features, I hope, at least so. Yeah. They just have to talk about them. That's the biggest thing. If they just address it and make it part of the conversation, and they're like, yeah, when you're in the shadows, the enemies can see you if you're close enough. Yeah. It's not like you're invisible, it, like in Gollum, you know? But it, It's just always hard, I feel, pre-launch when you haven't like really toyed around with it yourself because also with fall over with mirage if you would ask those questions they would be like very uh like talking about the ai as if it's like the biggest cool new thing and then you would play it and you're still like oh, i can easily cheese this so yeah it's always like the words is always like they have been working on it for a long time so obviously it's probably better than what we had but it's still not what we really want yeah uh, in the end i think that's fair um but cool. Yeah. No, I mean, I think we've had um, a, a wonderful show. Uh, since we're in November, is it an okay time to start watching Christmas movies? That's a good question. It's always, on. It's always <laughs> an okay time to start watching Christmas movies. Just do what you want. Just do what you want. I am much less forgiving than Joe Raptor. Absolutely oh, really? not. I don't no, care. I think you have to wait until right after Thanksgiving and then it's a speed run. Now, if you're not in the US, of course it gets tricky because you don't really have Thanksgiving. You have nothing yeah. to give thanks over. Um, <laughs> you don't get turkeys. No waffles. <laughs> it's true. Oh, that's good. And your drop shots and stuff. Yeah. Um, and your clogs or what are they? What are they called? My tree is going up this weekend. Okay, now you're going too far. Christmas movie, sure. Okay, that's insane. But that tree, yeah. get get that out. <laughs> get that down. Unless you like kept it for the whole year. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Like yeah. Oh man, judge me. I dare you, <laughs> dude. It's November first, and you're putting up your Christmas tree. <laughs> like two months yeah. ahead of time that's crazy um anyway much love everybody thanks for chilling thanks for hanging it's been a joyous yes. time we love you dearly and uh as always thank you to everybody who yeah. watched with us live all of the super generous super chats and uh, can you like and you're, you will probably for, forget it but like it, instead of like it's a wonderful day can you like say it's the most wonderful day of the year like when you start the podcast oh, yeah. next week yeah i can do that it's the most it's like, wonderful. Or, or are you like against it? And can we only do that after Thanksgiving? I mean, I won't go to the chorus, but we can we can start. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. If the, the chorus, you got to wait till Christmas. Yeah, um, okay. that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, also, shout out to One Mad Driver for subbing with Prime and Mark Kiost for subbing with Prime as well at the top of the show. You guys are gems. You guys are, are wonderful. <laughs> Much love, everybody. Stay safe. We'll see you in the show next week, and I'll see you yes. soon. And Joe Raptor, goodbye. Soon. Blah blah blah. You've seen it before. Yeah. I love you all. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.